What's up? There he is. Howdy, Mike. <laughs> How have you been, man? How are you feeling? Oh, I've seen better days. I know look I'm like, sure. I, I look like a homeless Jesus right now because I have uh, I don't have a home, but I also haven't shaved at all and yeah. performed several miracles. If it makes miracles. you feel any better, neither did Jesus. So you just look like Jesus. No, oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, homeless Jesus is just redundant. Oh man. Homeless Jesus is just Jesus. <laughs> that's just that's plain old classic jesus yeah you don't need to say yeah. carbonated coca-cola you just gotta say coca-cola because that's exactly it yes <laughs> oh, true, oh, oh. well how have you been i love the it almost looks like you're in a, ch a chest right now. Uh, yeah yeah i you remember that movie it's totally cancelable now but it was called the in the indian in the cupboard that's what happened, man. I used to be a toy. Kid threw me in this cupboard. Now I'm a person. <laughs> oh, but you're stuck in the cupboard. That yeah. is. I'm stuck in the cupboard and I I podcast from it now. The so... boy was nice enough to put some audio equipment in there. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, he <laughs> put some audio equipment in here. But yeah, I mean, I've gotten all kinds of stuff. It's just like it's it's the um my bed my bed frame. And people are like are you in a library and i'm like no i mean it's just my <laughs> i don't know but um but yeah. <laughs> it's my bed frame from the victorian ages so yeah, i just yeah it's my bed vintage. frame because i live in a library but <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's my bed frame diy i took all the bookshelves from the library and yeah. i i crafted them to help me sleep exactly better. that's what i used my library card for what have you done with your life <laughs> <laughs> because it's a metaphor because we're all books deep down like, you exactly. in between the shelves there's there's a lot to mike valdez heck yeah there is oh, yeah man, man. Well, I mean, what better place to open that book than a comedy advice podcast? Absolutely, with, man. With, with me, your host, Stefan Satani. And uh, everybody, if you're wondering who is this beautiful voice that's not <laughs> Stefan Satani, it's comedian, actor, singer, multi-hyphenate wonder. And he's got an, an excellent bed, bed case. Bed, yeah. Bedstead? Bed? Yeah. Head? Bed frame. Bed head. Yes, yeah, bed frame. Head. That's it. I do have Mike, my head. Mike Valdez, everybody. Clap, hey. clap, 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 clap. Oh man, welcome. By the way, you have no bed head. You have perfect head. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I, I, I'm having one of those weird hair days today, but uh, that makes me feel a little bit better. We'll oh, see. dude, you've got a nice, it's almost like the, it's if the Nike swoosh was just reversed, you got <laughs> right? that beautiful, just like, yeah, wait. that's actually where I got my inspiration from. I saw the swoosh. It said, just do it. And I was like, I will. <laughs> <laughs> except except it's upside down. So it's like, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it ever. <laughs> exactly. I, Telling <laughs> other people, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the anti-swoosh. But yeah. it's, it's wonderful. It's very avant-garde. And I feel like it just matches the whimsical personality that is Mike Valdez, which, oh, thank you, man. I mean, what can't Mike Valdez do? I, I was listening to your- <laughs> <A lot. laughs> Quite a bit, actually. How much time do you have? <laughs> 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 well, um, I, what, I've got plenty of time to talk about the things that the Mike Valdez can't do, can do, yeah. but the things that you can do very well, stand up. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on that. How long have you been doing stand up, by the way? Oh, man. Uh... I, I think technically it's been six years, but I don't count 2020 because I didn't really do anything 2020. So I guess five years. Right. Yeah. Okay. About that. But and yeah. Go, go ahead. No, that's all I was going to say is that I've been doing it for five years and I started in Los Angeles and then, um, which is crazy because a lot of people wouldn't say that you should start there. That's kind of where you're supposed to end up. But for me, the way that my brain works is that I saw that everybody was better than me. And my head was just like, well, you either get good or get out. And it made me get really good really quickly. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I started there, actually. Oh, that's excellent. It's a chuckle catalyst. And I mean, obviously, by the way you do your hair with the anti-swoosh, yes. Mike Valdez doesn't do things by the book. 
Yeah, oh, exactly. I, I, even his his bedstand. It's not by the book. It's by the bookshelf. <laughs> but yeah. five years, and uh, now you're in Florida, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's where family is. So COVID doesn't exist here, but <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Great. At least, I, at least the culture doesn't believe in it. It still exists, but there's a lot of people that just don't agree that it's an actual thing, apparently, or at least that's what they are showing by their actions. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So. <laughs> and I was going to ask if, by the way, listeners, for those of you very concerned at me and my cough, I recently yeah. had COVID, which uh, was not a fun experience. Now the antibodies are coursing through my veins, but this is my first podcast in 11 days. It's been, it's been a long time. I feel, I feel so pumped to be back into it. I'm sure I'm going to die after I finish this podcast, but yeah, I mean, who knows? You're ending on a good one. (laughs) Uh, The best one. I was like, who can I end on? Yeah. Oh man. Which you're ending on a good one, man. Yeah, yeah, I I, uh, I just hope you have an editor, but <laughs> uh, it's me. But I <laughs> I'm just gonna slide this one to live because I I don't know I might perish before or fall into an eternal slumber. Yeah, we'll see. But I hope you not. Know. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, can you imagine? You see the next day, podcaster dead after magnificent yeah. episode with magical I- anti swoosh. Mike I would Valdez. feel so I would feel so bad. <laughs> no, don't, don't, because uh, you know, I'm just living my life to the fullest over here, podcasting. Yeah. I've basically been quarantining. I don't know how I got this. Cause I, I was been... gonna I was gonna ask you, how do you think you got it? Hmm. I'm not sure. I was screaming into the mouths of strangers. Okay. But beyond that, no, I, do that. I don't know. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I think I went to a comedy show. Uh, and, well, I don't think I did go to a comedy show, but that's where I think yeah. I got it. I went to go see, I had Eric Griffin on yeah. my podcast and then I oh, went I know. to go. I listened. Oh, you saw, you saw him and Michael Yo. I know too much about your life. Oh yes. And I'm going to have <laughs> Michael Yo on the yeah. podcast. Nice. Coming up. So he's, he's a really great guy. He is a stand up guy. He's just oh, so, yeah. so nice. Yeah. And I bought some of his merch. I'm, I'm flaunting my shirt, but it's not Michael Yo merch. Yeah. But I got a little <laughs> shirt with a panda on it. And it's, oh, it's, adorable. it's adorable. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, but, gl- were you next to me? Was that you next I, to I me? I wasn't. No, it okay. wasn't me. <laughs> I saw a little swoosher, but I didn't yeah. know if it was. was Somebody like, else trying to be me. <laughs> oh, little wannabes. But, yeah. but anyway, I think that's probably where I got it. Even though we were stand up live was the venue that they, they had it at and everything was partitioned. My wife and I were far away from pretty much everybody, wow. but I guess maybe laughter isn't the safest thing to be doing in a closed space. Cause everyone's going, ha ha, yeah, there's course, my air. Yeah. And so, yeah, of course I, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's tough. But I don't know, man. I mean, I I also think that you know, you if you're if you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it at this point. That's kind of how I saw it or how I see it is like if you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it. Obviously, don't go you know spitting in people's mouths and things like that. But at the same time, you gotta live your life, man. I mean, it's it's difficult being inside of the same four walls for a year you know, not doing anything like who would have thought that indoor dining would be something you, you like craved for, you know? Mm, right. Right. But it's a, uh, it's a weird world right now. Yeah. It's such this weird, delicate balance of like, do, do what's safe for others. And then also for yourself, because right. you have to, you have to really be cognizant of how you're doing mentally and be able to, you can, I think you can do things safely having this being said from a guy that just got COVID, but <laughs> I, I think you can I do think, it a lot safer now. Cause now you can't get it anymore. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've got those, those delicious antibodies just coursing through my veins. So yeah. I am. Uh, I'm, uh, yes. I, I triumphed. I beat COVID. Yeah. Beat it down hard. 
Damn. Yeah, well, man. it's uh, it's I've had some scares uh, within this past year and a half, I guess it's been maybe a year. It feels longer, but uh, but yeah, I've had some scares and I swerved them, man. I got real lucky. I swerved them. I took those tests and they were like, nah, you got it's a negative. And I'm like, all right, sounds great. It almost makes it sound like a pregnancy scare. You just buy a oh, COVID yeah. test and go pee on it. And then you're like, mm, two lines, COVID, three yeah. lines, COVID and pregnant. Like, well, I oh, did no. pee on them. Is that not how you're supposed to do it? <laughs> yeah. They're like, take the swab. <laughs> yeah. It's all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that's that's how we do it in Arizona. We're sprayers. <laughs> yeah, that's so. the right way to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so also beyond the stand up, you've also mm. got a, a wee little podcast called yeah, Childlike at best which i had the pleasure of being a guest on and uh it's just a whole lot of fun it's a wave of nostalgia which is what my review is is going to say when i post it up on apple podcasts but it's just uh it's it's a lot of fun but don't take my word for it mike why don't you tell us a little bit about the genesis why did you um create this podcast and why the theme yeah that's uh that's a really good question so I've always loved podcasts and I've always loved talking to people and my favorite thing to talk to people about and to like nerd out about is nostalgia. You know, I like Nickelodeon and I like Disney channel, all those different things that we grew up on. And I basically set out to do a podcast that was just a comedy podcast where I talked to people in the entertainment business because I have all facets of people that I know from musicians to comedians to actors and all that stuff and kind of just learn about what it is that inspired them to become entertainers. And as the show went on, it started developing this new meaning, at least to me, and I started looking deeper into it and I started realizing that who we were as children really kind of mirrors who we are now in a lot of ways because that was the kid that had the dream that was the kid that had the magic so to say that the world wasn't telling them that they couldn't do it yet you know they were they were just like i want to be i want to be a astronaut give me a box here's my spaceship let's do it and there's I I just found that to be like a much more deep thing. And, you know, in in all reality, my favorite conversations to have with people in general are conversations that are very silly and also very vulnerable at times, because that's just real. We're connecting with each other and any dingus can make a podcast about Nickelodeon, you know, and, and the thing is what made it me and what made it personal for the show was truly not only reminding myself and the guests, but also the listeners to never lose their sense of childlike wonder, because that is the thing that is going to remind you where you came from and also remind you the journey that you've taken uh, to where you are now, which is easily lost sometimes. That is beautiful. Is that the secret to how you also appear so young? How old are you, by the way? (laughs) I'm 33. Wow! I think I think we talked. Did you hear that youthful (laughs) scream? Yeah. Um, (laughs) That was was almost like a Yahoo. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you are forever preserved at age sixteen. I hope so, man. It's a good problem to have. I mean, the um, uh, people ask me this all the time. I'm very lucky. I just have no idea. I think it's just part of my, my genes. It's part of my, it's part of the, the Cuban lineage, you know, where we all just look young. I mean, there are cigars and no wrinkles. That's what the Cubans are known for. Yeah. There are just some people that I, I mean, it's, it sounds funny, but it's just true. Like there's a lot of people where they just look 18 until the day they look a hundred and then that's it you know that's like all you've ever looked in your life is 18 and 100 
you know so i hope that that's what happens to me man where yeah. like it takes a while for me to look 100 well congratulations on that because you're looking great <laughs> i feel like I, I i think i have it in the cards where i'm gonna have a time freeze gap but yeah. it's gonna be like 40 to 60 and yeah. I'm, it's gonna be because i'm bald and people can't tell how old i am and i lose all my hair and I'm just going to look like Bruce Willis did until one day nice. they're like, dang, Bruce got old. Yeah. And that's going to be me. So, yes. Um, yeah, man. I mean, and also the good thing is, as well, is like uh, guys naturally, for some reason, guys naturally start looking better as they age. So that's always good, you know? Yeah. I wish that was the case. Men for have me. like that, men have like that gentlemanly look that they that they don't get until they're like 30 or 40 around there i haven't gotten there yet either but i'll get there (laughs) yeah (laughs) once that past puberty (laughs) it'll it'll probably happen (laughs) yeah i think i don't know i think i may have skipped that part and i just went into old guy that lives in a cabin because (laughs) now it's just i i don't know i'm just brushing wood chips off myself and uh (laughs) I don't know. There's like maybe I sweat maple syrup. I don't know what's going on with me, but yeah. I think I just need to shave the beard. Maybe that'll yeah. bring back maybe, the youth. Maybe that you, you sound like Mr. Woodchuck from Full House. Like that seems. <laughs> <laughs> maybe when he grew the beard, he turned into a puppet that Dave Collier uses. <laughs> Perhaps that is true. I yeah. have felt something lodged in my ass as well. So that might be yeah. Dave Coulier's hand. <laughs> it just could be. controlling me. Have you been wondering me. why everything is made of water? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have. That's yeah. been very strange. So okay. maybe, maybe we're getting Dave... closer and closer to what the problem is. <laughs> maybe I got the COVID <laughs> from Dave Coulier. Mate, that's probably it. That That is it. <laughs> <laughs> Case cracked. Yeah, so, case <laughs> all right. Well, we're the company advice podcast is all about giving advice and self help and all that good stuff. But before we dive into that, I just wanted to step on the brakes and pause and reflect on your music as well. I was listening sure. on Spotify to Mike Valdez and The Noise, which yeah. I thought at first The Noise was maybe a rapper, but mm-hmm. it's it's the, <laughs> the ensemble of just you and your noise. You're beautiful. Yeah. I don't know how I would describe it. It's not quite pop punk, is it? It's almost sure. like pop punk slash there's a tinge of Christian almost. And I know that sure. listening to other podcasts, you had um, been part of church bands and things like that, which I myself had been. Yeah. And so, um, but, but how long have you been playing that sweet, sweet music? And how long has the noise been a part of Mike Valdez? Sure. Yeah. So I've been playing music since it's probably the the thing I've done for the longest besides acting, but it's um, I've been writing music since I was in maybe 11th grade in high school. Sure. Uh, none of those songs were good at all. Um, but, <laughs> but I, yeah, man, I mean, we talked about it when you were on my podcast, like I was in a lot of really bad bands and like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, I, I was, uh, at at one point I just started creating this project and, uh, it used to be called on the contrary and it was just me and, uh, and I would just do like acoustic stuff around the area and and I would tour it, you know, and all these different kinds of things. And that's how a lot of these songs kind of came up. They all started very acoustically with the intention to be a full band. I just could never find one. And so it got to a point where I wanted to finally record my first album. And when I did, I came up with this idea to call myself Mike Valdez and the Noise because the noise can be interchangeable, meaning that I can have different band members and, and, you know, and of course, if all goes according to plan, Mike Valdez will always be there, you know? So that's kind of the reason why I decided to call it that. And also just because there was a deeper meaning behind it as well. Like uh, I've always been fascinated by noise because noise is something that travels and you can't stop hearing it until people stop talking about it, essentially. 
So the whole idea is that it'll start from my head to the stage, from the stage to the audience, from the audience to the next person who then comes around full circle. So the whole thing is that the noise is kind of a communal experience as opposed to a band name. Um, so that was the idea behind that. Um, but yeah, when it comes to when it comes to like what I write about, I've always I've always written, I've always just written about girls, man. I don't really know how to <laughs> how to describe it. You know, like I've always been like that. And like it's funny that you say that it has this Christian undertone, which is great. You're not the first person to tell me that. Um, but if you were to actually like read the lyrics to a lot of these things it has the undertone but the purpose is for it to be kind of satirical um because you know for example there's a song called sanctity um and that's actually a song that has been universally thankfully has been universally liked by all different kinds of religions and things and you know where they talk to me and they're like you know I know it's it's like technically about Jesus or whatever and I'm like it's not really about Jesus it's actually like my personal problems with the church and mm. the reason why I I use those chords in the song it's on, is on purpose because I want it to feel like a worship song you know I want it to feel like one of those church songs and then at the bridge where it says you are the future you are the voice so don't make your mouth a weapon and rather go out to the world and make some noise and then it goes into like a group kind of like chorus where like the intention is supposed to be that the church is now singing we are the future we are the voice and we won't make our mouths the weapon we'll go out to the world and make some noise mm. um so that's kind of the idea is like i from growing up in church and things like that i always felt a little jaded i've been a, a little right. jaded because right. it's very judgmental in a lot of ways i'm not saying every church is like this i'm not saying every person is like this but um but in all reality the sad thing is that the reason why religion doesn't work and the reason why politics don't work is because people are involved and people right are flawed, right you know right so <laughs> um, no i totally agree with you and i remember back when i had a band i also had a song called sanctity but right. it was just about some titties that were so nice. They looked holy. So <laughs> I, was... <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Titties in the name. <laughs> I apologize for that joke. I will cut it out of the podcast. That was horrible. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. That's great. That oh. was great. But Please man i i just feel i am not worthy for the complexity of thought that goes behind mike valdez well it goes inside mike valdez <laughs> oh, please. from mike valdez so i'm just a dude man i i'm just a dude uh <laughs> i was just thinking i'm just a dude and life is a nightmare, <laughs> <It's> a nightmare. <laughs> i'm just a dude well, now it's i'm just a dad but <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> man oh well well beautiful well you know what you're gonna be perfect for mm -hmm. some advice that we're going to give so before we crack so. into it i wanted to ask because i usually before we get into the questions i like to get us nice and jazzed inspired yeah. with an inspirational quote so before i provide the one that i have i like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days or ones that they just really hug tightly uh, yeah. like a page to a book or maybe a book to a bookshelf yeah or a bed to a bed frame <laughs> or a bed to a bed frame keeping yeah. it all together yeah um okay so the first one i would actually say man after having listened to eric griffin say this oh, what a quote dude <laughs> It's uh, it's you, you don't, you don't fail. You just quit. And it's just like, oh, what a quote, dude. Love that inspiration yes. so much. Yes. That was so sick when he said that. That's like the best thing <laughs> off of that episode that I got where I was like, wow, that is inspiring. And um, 
and of, of course i would say steve martin has a great quote that says be so good that no one that no one can ignore you um Ooh. and uh another one that i was that i was thinking of was you can teach a man to fish but if you teach a man to become a bear you don't have to do anything at all <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Valdez original? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just made it up right now. And when you think about it, it's kind of true. <laughs> it, it's the grisly truth. That's what yeah, it if is. If you can teach him to become a bear, you don't have to fish at all. <laughs> yeah, you just got to press pause and, yeah. you know, let, let the bear do its trick. Exactly. Oh, man. Well, beautiful. I can't bear anymore. Yeah. So we will move on. <laughs> To my inspirational quote, and this inspirational quote is by none other than a robot called Inspirobot. And what nice. its main purpose in life to do is it takes AI, takes some of the wisest words known to man or woo man, just mashes them together for a beautiful, delicious inspirational quote. So this week, Mike, let me know what this means to you. Inspiration, Ooh. Inspirobot says... Never let nobody tell you that you are not cooking for your friends. <laughs> I don't know why that's the funniest thing I've heard all week. <laughs> <laughs> Never let <laughs> nobody tell you. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> It looks like Inspirebot's AI is leveled up, so it's getting into double negatives now. Never <laughs> let nobody tell you you are not cooking for your friends. That is so good. That's like, <laughs> that is that is something that is on every Bible Pelt's wall somewhere. Like, <laughs> you walk into a Southern home and it says that on a quilt. <laughs> Oh my, it's got it in cursive. It's sold at those at home places. Never. It's, never let nobody tell you you can't cook for your friends. It's probably, so it's probably got Larry the Cable Guy, a picture of him, and then in quotes. It's too smart for Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Let's be real. I mean, <laughs> that's so good. Oh, oh no. man. I mean, there's so much going on there. So <laughs> it's very Southern, but it's also very pop punk to where it's like, don't let anybody tell tell you that I can't do something with my friends. Cause I, you know, my friends over you, you know, exactly. Very Agreed. pop punk, but also very Southern. I mean, Oh my God. By the way, Mike, can we, yeah. that just gave me an idea. Can we yeah. do like a, a Southern pop punk on, ensemble? <laughs> Why not? man? Oh my God. Why like, not? Blink 44 because Southerners blink one third of the time. <laughs> Regular people. blink. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, no, dude, the name of the band is kiss my grits. That's the name of the band. Oh, I kiss love my it. grits. Kiss, kiss my me. grits and, and uh and then we come out and we're like yo what's up we're kiss my grits from rome georgia i'm like <laughs> we're gonna play our first song show me your gritties and yeah then... show me your gritties there you go oh God. yeah um man there's a lot going on there i mean it also is it's also like not that deep it's very shallow in the sense of like yeah you're you're right like never tell like never let anyone tell you that you can't cook for your friends <laughs> and like but also to be fair here's the thing too please cooking for your friends is one of the top tiers of like love in a lot of cultures you know, especially in Cuban culture, man, like in Cuban culture, if someone cooks for you, that's love. And if you don't eat it, you're not invited to their house anymore and you're no longer friends. So it is, it, it's probably just like 
I would say cooking for pe- for people in general, for your family, for your friends, is the ultimate way of showing love. I agree. <clears throat> I absolutely agree. I think that it's like this slow, it's a very slow tantric way of lovemaking. Mm-hmm. It's like I am pouring my heart mm-hmm. into gnocchi yeah. for you. Gnocchi bolognese and like my bits of me are going into that. Hopefully right. not literally, but yeah. I am making something for you and you eating me is a sign of your love to me showing, oh, I accept you and I'm going to let you enter me mm-hmm. through the mouth and I, I'm going to be nourished yeah. from your nourishment. And there's and- there's something kind of, you know, not to interrupt you, but there is something Please. kind of weird oh. but about about like how I don't know if you've ever noticed this or if this happens in your family, but whenever anyone spends all day cooking, which is a lot of the time at my house, uh, mm-hmm. at any time or any kind of Cuban household or Latin household, the person that cooked doesn't even enjoy their own meal. They just like stare at you eating it. <laughs> what? Okay. So what Italians do is they'll, they'll do the same thing. My grandma you know, nah. I remember mm-hmm. she would she would always she'd have her chair and she'd be up doing things constantly. So she'd never mm-hmm. sit there. And then when she sat, she'd be like, "It's uh too dry." Yeah. Like, no, 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 nah, e buona. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. No, no, it's not too dry. And then she's like, "Hmm, a little dry." And then you're she's fishing for these compliments, or I don't know, maybe self loathing on her own maybe. yoke, but like grams. This shit's delish. What are you talking yeah. about? And so there's that constant. It's almost like an argument. There's not even the time to be able to enjoy it because you got to have this back and forth and then you just get used to it. So I guess that's a way of love. That's yeah. Yeah. My, the, the way the Cubans are though, is that it's almost like they cook all day just so they can complain. Like they, like you can't be in the kitchen. They're like, get out of the kitchen. I've been cooking all day. You're like, I'm getting water. Like it's not even not anywhere near you, you know, but, and then if you, if you like something, (laughs) like, let's say you like something (laughs) and, and and your mom or your abuela says like, do you like it? And you're just like, yeah, it's good. And they're like, oh, it's only good. I spent the whole day cooking and it's only good. Like they want you to do a backflip, like while you do a review of their food you know oh so I don't yes know. yeah no i agree it's like my wife showing me a dress and being like do i look fat i can't if i say no you don't look fat that is mm-hmm. not an acceptable answer and that will award me one week on the couch but mm-hmm. if i say babe oh contraire monsil you look fab or i say that you look dashing ravishing stupendous those are the key words that make it you know, that extra mile to get me yeah. back on the bed because you can't just be like, <laughs> no, you don't, this is okay. You look, yeah. you look fine. No, you gotta be like, you look stupendous, like an angel that went to TJ Maxx. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's, that's just great. how you do it. I would, uh, I would personally try this. I would say, I would say, honey, not only do you not look fat, you made everyone in this store look fatter. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, I love that. You just, yeah. you're a ten, and you just sunk everybody else down to a four. Yeah, that's how yeah. it goes here. Yeah. I I walked into this store being kind of attracted to everyone until you wore that dress, and I realized I won. <laughs> Looking now at everybody else, I kind of want to vomit. That's yeah. how I am now repulsed <laughs> by all of the other women in here yeah. because of their dress choices. So was, yes, please buy that Ren and Stimpy T-shirt at TJ. Please. <laughs> Please buy that. It wasn't going to make you look fat at all. (laughs) (laughs) Please buy that Ramones tea at Hot Topic. Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, And she's like, we're not going to take it. No, we're not going to take it. Oh God. Well, all right. Now that I feel like we're inspired from this quote, we're going to go and move on to some questions. We've got this first question sent in by a fan that they found on Reddit. Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. It says, 
Why doesn't she say hi first? Oh, sorry. Why doesn't she say hi first? Okay, so me and this one girl I've been texting, and I've noticed over the past three days, I'm always the one saying hi first, and she doesn't say hi first at all. Does this mean she doesn't like talking to me? She isn't dry whenever we text. The complete opposite, actually. And that's the it. complete opposite, actually. So she is sopping wet when texting. So, so here's the thing. I need to know what that means. Because either way, I think you he's not in a good place to be honest because okay please I'm really elaborate thinking, i'm really thinking about this so so here's this is gonna sound so mean oh please <laughs> but here's the thing lawrence i i'm sure you're a great guy um here it if, comes if you have to address this girl every time she doesn't want to talk to you. And if she's being nice to you, it's because she feels bad that she's be that she's ignoring you. <laughs> so so it's like it's kind of too full where like I I mean well, and that's the other thing too, where like let let's just say he like let's take that whole like she's not dry. She's the opposite. Like, let's take that completely literal. Let's take that completely literal as like, whenever we talk, all we talk about is sex. You're not getting anywhere with that either. Oh, I thought you were going to say she had just gone into the rain and came back and was like, I'm sopping wet. Do you want to yeah. talk about the weather? Yeah, you know there's that too. But it is it's so which, moist outside. Which again, same exact thing. You're just, you're not really getting anything unless you work for the Weather Channel. Right. Exactly. If you two are anchor people, mm -hmm. colleagues talking about the humidity, the precipitation, <laughs> then yeah. some other things might be precipitating. However, there's a chance of no showers of love if you guys are not that. So I think yeah. you just got to be honest with yourself and you got to, I would say a couple things to find out if it's if it's true or not. Cat Fisher from another account, mm -hmm. the yeah. Hanning Chatham and show a, a nice picture of your a hunky version of yourself or just a hunky Channing Tatum and see if she texts him with that same moistness. Whatever mm -hmm. whatever that is, that is a very weird descriptor that you have here. Oh yeah. Um or be like, "Hey, why do I always talk first? And she see what she says. And then if she doesn't change that behavior, she's just not that into you. Like you said, Mike. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you, you're going to have to, it's going to be a little wet and drippy for a little while. And yeah. you're going to have some soggy shoes and socks. Mm -hmm. But you change the clothes of yesterday and you get into the clothes of today. And they're going to be fresh. And you still might be a little moist. But I think you'll move on and you'll find another girl. It's yeah. Dryer. It's <clears throat> I relate to this in a lot of ways from growing up. You know, I would I I would fall in love very easily. And sure. I thought that this was the person of my dreams. And then, you know, I would talk to them and it just it, it just wasn't it just wasn't working for a lot of reasons. And like, you know, here comes another deep thought, but like the, the truth is when the reason why we're so entranced with our crushes is because when you don't know someone, they can never do anything wrong. So they're perfect and they'll never not be perfect. Mm, that's so, so that's kind of the thing where like, you know, I, I completely feel for him, which is also why I was like, this is going to sound kind of mean. Cause you know, this is somebody, it, it took me a long time to learn this, you know, but, and, and trust me, when you're at a certain age, you don't think that there's anyone else, but you'd be surprised at how many other people there that are out there that are so much cooler and probably more attractive, you know, because they're so much cooler, you know? Right. Um, right. Right. So, yeah, that's yeah. where I would go. So what would you just leave her? Stop texting? Would you give a heads up two week notice? Maybe. I mean, it, it just depends on the relationship, but again, something that sounds kind of mean, but it's probably true. She probably won't care in the first place. 
<laughs> so just so, okay. Yeah. That might be a good experiment too. Just stop texting her, and then if she texts back and is like, "Where'd you go?" and then that might mean that you mean something to her. But if you just stop texting and then you never hear anything back from her. Also, here's another thing too, Lawrence. You gotta be careful to not be the person that she's that she uses because this happens to me a lot mm. as well where it used to happen not as much anymore but where she'll come back to you and be like oh you weren't texting me anymore she's using you because she knows that you're gonna make her feel good all the time you're gonna say nice things to her and all this stuff so she comes back from that real person that thinks that she's a piece of garbage and then she comes to you and you're like oh but you're so perfect and you're so this and you're so that and then she just leaves you for some other guy that's going to think she's a piece of trash. So don't be that guy either, you know, because right. that's not going to that's not going to help anyone. Right. I, you know, and I think that you being so complimentary towards her might be a problem where mm -hmm. it's OK to be complimentary and give compliments, but like a light drizzle don't sure. maybe that's why she's not dry she's wet there you sopping go. wet with compliments yes and so if you are like you're my angel then mm -hmm. she's gonna grow those wings and she's gonna fly away from you into the horns of a, a demon man and a piece yeah. of trash so mm -hmm. what you need to be like is you're okay but that dress that ramones t-shirt might make you not look as uh complimentary <laughs> as you think and just be honest be on, be honest because that will yeah. start to echo your thoughts yeah. and you'll be like oh wait she's not the most amazing person in the world right and she will not use you for that delicious compliment dopamine that yeah. she'll just keep coming back to when yeah, other people treat would, her like trash yeah i would say i would say be be complimentary don't neg you know, don't, Correct. don't like make up lies about, about a person just because you're trying to make them like you. Yeah. But <clears throat> I've, a thing that I've noticed, man, is that it 100%, which a lot of guys would be like, but that's, you know, I'm never going to get out of it. It just works out so much better if you just want to be their friend and then move it from there. You know, a lot of guys would be like, but you're in the friend zone. I don't believe in the friend zone. Not anymore. I don't believe it in anymore. Really? If you, if, yeah. Because the thing is, you, if you believe you can't get out of the friend zone, you're not confident in yourself. I you agree. Know? So, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. So, and, and, and not to mention, the friend zone is great. Like, I mean, unless, you're, unless your intentions were never to be in the friend zone in the first place which like then i understand but being friends with someone is just as great it just depends it depends on it which of course every every situation is different every person is different i get it but yeah that's where i'm at right now where like i don't really believe in a friend zone anymore you know yeah and i i feel like <clears throat> genuine connection is a lot cooler in a lot of ways and um and yeah, I mean, I, I also have come to find that when it comes to me, um, I become I become a lot more attractive once you get to know me, as opposed to like, you know, just looking at me and you're like, I mean, yeah, he's fine. That was my quote on my yearbook. Yeah. Was it? <laughs> I become more attractive once you get to know me. I swear. Uh, no, but but I do think that that is so true. I think there's a rule of two where mm -hmm. it's like on the scale, if we are to judge people on a scale of one to 10, mm -hmm. I feel like a personality can you bring you up or down two points. Oh, yeah. And, and I so feel true. like I have met girls that at first I wasn't initially attracted to them. But after getting to know them, I was like, she is a rocking chick. And others that I thought were quite attractive. And then afterwards, I was like, no, thank you. Nope. So it's just, and you know what? <laughs> to the, to the, it's so true. It's so true. That happened to me recently. Oh, really? <laughs> like, Dude. like a day ago. Where like, I saw, I, I saw, uh, 
<laughs> I saw this really this really attractive girl. Uh, there's an app that I've been using called Clubhouse, and it's it's oh. like this like voice messaging app. I've been using it for networking and stuff. And there was this uh, room that was really interesting. It was called in it's a lot of a lot of people have been using this in dating culture it's called shoot your shot yes. and so yeah so like you basically it's like this huge room and everybody's super attractive and they all shoot their shots and then you're like yeah so like are your dms open and then the girl's like my dms are open which is like a way of her being like i mean i guess i find you attractive but like i'm just gonna delete your dm or whatever so there was one that was super interesting called sing your shot and so I was like, oh, this is really cool because, you know, it, it, not even because I find people attractive. I was like, I, I can hear people sing. I could sing with them, you know, that kind of stuff. And the room also wasn't about dating. The room was literally just like when you sing, just sing to the person that you want to sing. And then they'll sing to the person they want to sing as Yo, a dating culture at all. That and is so, amazing. That's groundbreaking. Yeah. Because I feel like. Oh my God, that just turned, it just made, they should just call it new Disney movie because right. <laughs> it, so, it sounds like, oh my God, I would love that. I mean, yeah. to my wife, if I could just be like, babe, I made you some eggs. And she's like, <laughs> scrambled are over easy. And yeah. I was like, scrambled are so your favorite. I thought, yeah, I thought that was so fun. So I, um, so I saw this attractive girl and sure. I just, and I hadn't heard her sing. So I sang, uh, I sang Eye to Eye by Powerline to her. Um, oh. And uh, I mean, Powerline's the reason why I started playing music. But, um, but oh, yeah. Oh, man. The and then she, and, and I was like, oh, man. And so I sang and, and, you know, whatever. And then she started singing and I was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> 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 oh my god this is horrible to say horrible yeah. to say but there are some things back when i was single that i would see oh god I, this is like beyond personality though this is like talents and skills and things <laughs> like that but i remember it there are certain this is things what people subscribe for <laughs> if you if you see them do it and do it badly you just cringe a little bit and you're like uh yes. one of the things and I admit this is wrong, but I remember when I was a lifeguard and I was on swim yeah. team all my life. And so when I saw a girl and we'd be going to the beach or we'd go swimming or something and she's like, okay, here I come. And she starts swimming like that. I was just like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to let you drown because I can't, I just can't do it. Yeah. Did I freeze you? Okay. You're there. Okay. I get it, man. I totally get it. And trust me. And and to and look, man, I totally get it. Like I wasn't expecting her to be a professional singer, you know? But at the same time, it was like it was so bad that I was like, okay, this is like, you know, we we can't ignore how bad this is, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that is yes yeah. I've, it's I, like I, uh it's like shallow how where like where like you you see someone super beautiful but then you see the actual person inside and it's like an 85 year old woman who smokes three packs a day and you're like <laughs> i'm not into that you know <laughs> i get it i totally yeah. get it oh man all right well we're I think gonna we answered that question i think we answered that question <laughs> quite well yeah. So we're going to move on. We've got, um, we've got a new segment and it's called positive spin. And so what okay. this is, is it helps train your mind when bad things happen to start thinking of the positive instead of complaining and thinking of all the negative things that are happening. Like you spill coffee on yourself. And instead of saying, darn, I have coffee all over myself. Think, oh, I'm probably not going to spill coffee on myself again. And this scalding will be a cool story to tell at the bar or something mm -hmm. like that. Who knows? So yeah. Mike, I've got a scenario for you. Okay. You live in Florida. I do. An alligator does a B and E on your <laughs> edifice. Oh no. You live in a place with alligators or do you? No <laughs> I, 
I don't, I, technically I don't, but you always kind of live in the area of an alligator. <laughs> if that makes any sense. It makes a hundred percent sense. Yeah. So like, I'm not anywhere near like the swamp area, but if I saw an alligator, it wouldn't surprise me, you know? Terrifying. Yeah, but it is terrifying. I. It's uh, one of, it's one of the things that I'm not very stoked about. <laughs> I don't like alligators at all. That's in the cons column for oh, yeah. <laughs> living in Florida like yeah great weather yeah cons, sometimes tropical storms and it's a con it's a con for dating too i'm like she can't sing well she's an alligator not into it <laughs> and alligators look like dorks when they swim too so that would be out for me yeah <laughs> so <laughs> all right okay so a gator goes in your house yeah okay. it goes <laughs> right at it's singing horribly so it's even worse <laughs> oh my it's like God. if we listen to each other so, and then wow. it goes straight for your prized possession what is your most prized possession mike i mean oh, that's really tough it goes um, for your bed stand your library <laughs> bed stand I mean, rips it to shreds yeah I mean, I would say, I, I would say like my prized possession is me, you know, or okay. like my family, right? Okay. Okay. So let's just go Billy Madison here. No, not Billy Madison. Uh, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Takes a chunk off of the old Valdez, takes off your hand. One of right. them. Sure. The gator, you, you gave the gator a hand and mm -hmm. it was not kind. And now your hand, you've got one less hand. So what are some mm. positives to this scenario? <laughs> this is really tough because a lot of what I do involves having both hands. Oh, no. Because, like, I can't play piano anymore. I can't really <laughs> act because most people have two hands. Unless uh, there's, like, some weird yeah, Peter Captain Pan Hook. remake. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's about it. You'd and how perfect. funny would it be is if it was the alligator from Neverland? <laughs> you guys meet during casting calls and you're like, oh, this is awkward. Okay. Yeah. Like, why couldn't you just eat the clock? <laughs> um, he was out of yeah. time. Yeah, he was out of time, man. Um, man, that is really tough. I mean... I would really have to go into my past like Christian positive outlook on things Ooh. and be like, well, the reason why that this happened was because of something, you know, and then like, and then think of what that thing is, you know, um, which is kind of, it's, I understand that it's supposed to be like a positive thing and you're supposed to like, it's a, like, it's like a good thing to think that way, but also it's okay to be mad that you don't have hands anymore. And now you have to make water paintings with your feet. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay to be upset about that. That's like, I, I also believe in a God that's okay with you being angry about that. You know what I mean? Like that, oh, that, hands down. Really yeah, fair. for sure. Yeah. I think I think a couple of things you Instead touched on. I only it. have one hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say a couple of things, a couple of positives. I think by now there's the technology for some really cool prosthetics. So I think you could get like True. a really cool robo hand that's yeah. probably better than your regular hand. They could just yeah. play piano better, act better, everything. And so yeah. they, they say acting comes from the one hand. That's what, yes, so. they, exactly. <laughs> they, they, they say it doesn't come from the heart. It comes from the hand. So It's true, man. Have you seen Denzel's hand? Oh, it's my crazy. God. It's an Oscar it winning hand. It's, <laughs> and it's perfectly attractive, too, because it's symmetrical. Yeah, where that's. I'm so glad that you know that fact about Denzel, that he's perfectly symmetrical and that's why he's so attractive. That's I, hilarious that you know that. I remember seeing that because in one of my college classes when I was really struggling with how attractive 
or unattractive I was. And then the teacher's like, well, let's take a look at why people are attractive and not attractive. (laughs) And then it shows perfectly symmetrical Denzel. And then they're like, now, if you reach under your chair, you'll see a mirror with a line going right through vertically and you can see if you're attractive or not. And then, uh, so that wasn't a great day for me, but anyway, back to positive. To be fair, it's not a great day for most people. (laughs) <laughs> except for Den- because- I think Denzel snuck that into the curriculum and he was like I just want people to see how handsome I am so yeah. I think that needs to be stricken out of yeah because curriculum. I think I think the reason why that fact is so amazing is because he's one of the very few people that have a completely symmetrical face agree you know like it's like crazy but it also it the reason also why it's so interesting is because like oh like that's why he's so likable on screen and like you couldn't tell before like of course he has an amazing skill that a lot of people don't have of course he's you know all these different things but at the same time like you you never realized it until it's told to you and then you're like huh that's true he does have a completely symmetrical face that is you know that's very true and it also detracts from his disgusting repulsive hands yeah they're just (laughs) so gross (laughs) (laughs) and so the face just really keeps you up top here focusing on the good parts exactly all right well i i think we have properly handed handed off we can hand it off to the next segment (laughs) going to the next segment oh so we got more questions this next one it's by fan tara well she found it from reddit thank you Tara. Pantera. Thank you. And she says, a long lost pen pal stopped writing letters to me. How can I find out what happened to them? I mean, really? <laughs> Follow up question, Tara. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that your friendship has lost all of its ink. The ink has run dry on that relationship, and now you're done. Yeah, there's a there's a crazy ink that a lot of people have been using called the internet, and uh, and you would love this ink because you never have to go to the store to buy anything else. <laughs> and, um, it's an eternal well. Yeah, that it's you an can eternal just well. Into your DMs. Yeah, you would love it. It's great. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, the thing. Look, I'm not a fan of it, but at the same time. I am a fan of it. It's a yin and a yang. And, and like, it's, it, we're going to, we're going to talk about something serious right now, but, but it's just true. Like, you know, Facebook is a great thing, you know, it's a horrible thing, but it's a great thing at the same time, you know, because you can, you can find so many people like, look, man, this, this actually just happened recently. Um, I never, hardly ever go on Facebook unless I'm promoting something. And at this point, I don't even think people look at those posts because that's all I promote is things I'm doing and, and right. never anything else. I never, I never post my feelings. I never post anything um, or memes or anything. Um, and so. <laughs> those are the only but, two options you've got. Feelings, yeah. memes. Yeah. Nothing else. Feelings, memes. And that's it. And like, (laughs) and, uh, and for some reason, if you post really good memes, everyone thinks you're a really good comedian, which I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, and so, um, so anyway, uh, my old choir teacher's husband had an idea to, uh, for their 50th anniversary to have all of the different kids that she's taught how to sing, to make videos of them singing, you know, songs, originals, whatever, to make this like super deluxe birthday video thing. And, you know, long story short, man, I I haven't talked to her in quite some time since I was in high school. So, I mean, at the very least, 20 years. Two years. years. Yeah, oh. 20 years. <laughs> at, the, at the very least, a year. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's the oldest person to graduate high school. Um, and so. <laughs> yeah. But you snuck it in there because you look so darn youthful. 
that's so it. funny it's so funny um i'm very mad that i didn't come up with it myself but, <laughs> <laughs> but um but so you know and it was this beautiful thing and, and he he ended up shooting like her reaction and posting it and sending it to me and Aww. it was the most beautiful thing and like and at that moment i was like this is what the internet is for for moments like this man like you if you want to know what the internet is for watch videos on youtube of people from the army coming back to see their family oh. that's what the internet is for dude it's the most beautiful thing on the face of the planet and it allows you to be able to keep in contact with your family from all over the world and and all these different kinds of things and and friends and all these different kinds of things from all over the world but then it's also a place where you can find drawings uh, that other people have made of you having sex with your dog. So, <laughs> so it's a yin and a yang, it's you know? <laughs> very strong yin and yang. It's just, yes. ooh, man. Yeah, but it's, but, but it's true, man. The internet is like love. It's like anything great you can't have something that amazing without it being equally as horrible. Like, it's just the truth. Agreed. You know, that's why heartbreak is so difficult because love is so great. You know? That's, man, I'm going to put that back when I ask you about the inspirational quotes. We're going to add that one in. <laughs> well, thanks. I appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah. Man. So I think what we're trying to say here is... is really. <laughs> yeah is put your pen away yeah. what are you doing yeah. remove put your quill and ink back in the your antique drawer yeah. sell it on antique roadshow get yourself a smartphone and just start sliding into people's dms carpe dm mon yeah, frere. carpe that is very good carpe I'm, dm i uh, i'm this gonna podcast try. needs a shirt it is carpe dm oh funny that you mentioned that because shirts are on the way and i carpe dm is going to be one of the first designs. is it really holy cow i promise you this isn't an ad that i totally was told that i was supposed to do <laughs> perfect now i have the promo video for it and then, <laughs> and then i'm just gonna photoshop the the yeah. shirt on both of us so. yeah and then i'm gonna move the mic away <laughs> like it's just following me everywhere <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's oh. so good man i love that is that the only design or do you have multiple designs that you're doing i've actually written down several different designs where uh -huh. they're they're sassy inspirational quotes I love so it. i i have them written down somewhere and and i have a couple and there are some good ones, but my favorite one, the, the cornerstone of yeah. this movement is going to be Carpe DM. Yeah, so. yeah. Carpe DM is so good. And not only that, what's so great about that is that it's so good that it allows people who might not even know your podcast to buy it and then discover your podcast because of it. Yes. Which is why it's so good. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh. This is why I feel like we're best friends, Mike. Just <laughs> yeah, different man. coasts. I think we are. I don't see why not. <clears throat> oh, man, that spark that ignited from the first yeah. podcast that we did, it never went away. A yeah. little fire is still burning in my heart <laughs> yeah. for Mike Valdez and yeah. your, your upside-down swoosh. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, well, man. Mike, we've reached the end of the podcast, and now it's time to say adieu. But before oh, we do, I just wanted to ask you, what have you got going on? Where can people follow you? What, have, what do you want to plug? Okay. Yeah. So I'm not sure when this is coming out, but if it uh, is coming out anytime in April, I'm going to be at the Miami Improv April 20th. Um, you can come see me there Ooh. if you don't have COVID or if you don't believe in it. And um, I, <laughs> and then other than that, you can find me on Instagram at Mike Valdez, M-I-K-E-V-A-L-D-E-S. And you can find me on Twitter at I am Mike Valdez. You can go to whoismikevaldez.com to find out the answer to that question. And 
as far as other stuff, I mean, uh, of course, I have my album, Mike Valdez and the Noise. The name of the album is called Dreamer. It is everywhere where albums are sold or streamed. Um, and also my podcast, if you like nostalgia, childhood memories, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's called Child Like It Best with Mike Valdez. Have a lot of really cool people. Stefan has been on it. Um, I've had Christy Cello from Comedy Central, Matthew Broussard from Comedy Central, um, Mandy Johnson, who, uh, who started the Super Serious show in Los Angeles, whole bunch of really cool people that I talked to uh, about childhood. Um, and yeah, that's, that's everything for me. If that wasn't enough, that, that's everything. <laughs> that was beautiful. And I think I said this on your podcast, but I love how it sounds like you're going through an existential crisis as you name <laughs> your user names. <laughs> Mike yeah. Valdez. I am Mike Valdez. Who is Mike Valdez? I I'm don't know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Please tell me who is Mike Valdez. Yeah, please. My, that's my Twitter and Snapchat yeah. is, I think I'm Mike Valdez, but I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Where is Mike Valdez? Yeah. <laughs> where in the world is mike valdez my whatsapp is Guinness mike valdez because apparently everyone who has whatsapp is from another country like that, that is very true <laughs> I, the only people i use whatsapp with are my italian relatives and my wife's brazilian family it's true every time a friend tells me hey you should join our group on whatsapp i'm like why are you talking to people in spain what like what what do i need whatsapp for you can text me oh my god <laughs> It's so true. You, you live in Orlando. I'm just, you're three hours <laughs> away. You're not in another country. <laughs> you're like a different zip code, bro. That doesn't mean yeah. we got to go to WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Well, beautiful. All right. Well, if you want to hang out for like a couple, a minute or two after we say goodbye to the audience. Of course. Mike, yeah. More than welcome to. Yeah, audience. Man. Audience. You guys have been amazing. You've listened. You've done the whole thing. You've allowed us to enter your ear holes and nestle ourselves in there with our words, our laughs, our chuckles, our chortles. Thank you. <laughs> we love you. And we'll talk at you next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye.